Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was talking ahead. about a previous show. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead, bro. Go, okay. Yeah, I was watching that, and uh, I've been doing a lot of research in this area. And uh, you know, in Egypt, white was did represent purity, which I'm sure you guys know, right? Keep going. And uh, the priests they wore white, white linen, and uh, black was considered night. And also, when you look at the research, it'll say death, which it gives it a negative connotation. But in uh, ancient Athens, it didn't use the word death. They called it Westy when we passed. You know, so black represented Westy, which is a continuation of life. And then Osiris was considered the black one. That's right. Mm-hmm. The first research I had come across on that. And then also, too, on who... Uh, you know, is there a God? You know, that aspect. Okay. Uh, I came up with a, 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 a formula for that. It explains it pretty simply, which is uh, N, T, G equals Z, I mean, equals zero G. Because the Greeks called our Netaru gods, or Theos, which represents God for them. Those were Netar, which represents the uh, elements. Mm-hmm. So when you put together, put it together, the Greeks were calling our nether God, which then became God in German. Uh, and then when you do the math on it, that equals zero God. Is this the elements? At least that's what I've come up with. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, right. that's Appreciate very interesting, you. brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate your support. Right on, right on. I like what your brother's doing, man. man thanks right, thank a lot. You. Black, black African power. Tell a friend. Okay. Real way. All right. I ain't gonna take up your time. Let somebody else call in. All right. Thank you, brother. Keep looking. Keep looking at the show. If you got information to bring, we always appreciate that. We always Definitely. open for information. Appreciate you. In a real, in a real way. And if you get a chance, you might want to check out my little site I got over there. It's called Pac Biggie Com. That's Pac Biggie and C O M. Little animation thing I got going on. Some of the, uh, oh, Pac Biggie, yeah, yeah, definitely go to, okay. yeah, I like your videos, man, yeah, yeah, I like that, Pac is, hey, Pac thanks. Biggie, yeah, Pac thanks Biggie, a lot. All, all right, right thanks, man. Hey, another, one other quick thing uh, that uh, you might want to share, too, that I, I found that, you know, in my life, and with a lot of other brothers and sisters, that, you know, we're concerned in, in the relationship of why are we in this situation of being considered second-class citizens and so forth. The explanation of all that is having a clear understanding of colonialism. Right. When when you look at that around the world and all through Africa, uh, especially in uh, uh, Mabemba, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, Mabemba, is that the correct name for it? I'm in Africa? Sure. Are, uh, you ta- are you talking about an actual country? Yes, in Africa. M I. M, let's see, N I or N A M I B A. Namibia, Namibia, Namibia. Yeah, the uh, co- the uh, colonialism that took place there. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, uh, site online which shows how they colonized that part of Africa, and it just shows. It, it pretty much it shows what happened to us here in America. Oh yeah, it's a clear. It gives a clear understanding of, like, why are we in this position, Mm -hmm. you see, Uh, and what colonialism is in relation to to making the, you know, indigenous people, second-class citizens, bringing in the uh, uh, colonists to then perpetrate, you know, what the colonizers have them do to then oppress the people. It's all, you know, it's all a complete system. Right. But it answers those questions of why why are we in this position? Well, brother, all you got to do is look at the situation with Libya, you know, how they're invading Tripoli and how now they're going to go to the hometown of Sirte, which is the hometown birthplace of Muammar Gaddafi. I mean, that's just modern day colonialism, you know. Right, right. So, right, I, right. Mean, I mean, it's happening right before our eyes, you know. I, huh? I, I said it's happening right before our eyes, you know. I had to tell one brother... Because I have two friends that argued over the Illuminati and the handshake. And I'm like, man, I don't get off into that because I will show you where police are shooting you in plain sight. 
<laughs> so I don't have to look for secret handshakes and <laughs> mysteries and all that where they exactly. shoot this in plain sight. I showed it last week. It wasn't no Baphomet symbol and the secret. No, I'm not looking for all that. I can show you in plain sight where they shooting us down, hogtied, hands behind our back, old lady at Walmart getting slammed to the concrete. After yeah. she's profusely bleeding from the back of the head, woman still got her arm. And then at the end of the show, all white guys shoot, you know, with a beer and a. And all that, yeah, and all of that is colonialism. Absolutely. They oppress us in any way and every chance that they get. Mm. It's all over television. We are definitely uh, wrapped up in it, locked up in it, with this dome over us. You know, our, our ancestors wasn't. They call it plantation, but we were in concentration camps. Still are. Yeah, and brainwashed there. Definitely. And, uh, Definitely. You know, now we have the results of it. And now it's time to, you know, to educate us to move forward, to get past it. Absolutely. But uh, that's pretty much what I had to say about it, you know? Okay, brother. Well, we definitely appreciate your uh, your comment. Definitely. And keep supporting the show. All right. Y'all take care. Thank you. Peace. All right. Let me get back to racial identity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If, if you don't identify with your culture, then you do not identify with the history of your culture. Exactly. Absolutely. And in not identifying with the history of your culture, you can't identify what the hell happened to you. Wow. You can't do what this brother did. Right. You know, he jumped in out of nowhere, come out of nowhere with information that fit. D- yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, he talks about colonialism, but right. you got to know your history and you got to feel like you was there because I was there. All of us was there. That's All of right. us was there. Okay? Exactly. According to DNA. Yep, that's right. Not unless y'all won't be spooked out. Because <laughs> what make me up is my grandmother and my great-grandfather. And what make that's them right. up is their grandmother and their grandfather. And so on and so on and so on. Right. So all of us right here represent our great-great-grandparents. So I was there doing colonialism. Exactly. And I feel right. that pain exactly. because I'm not disconnected because I have racial identity. Exactly. That's right. When you look at the Koreans. And they had those stores and those malls because they racially identify with self and kind. Although some of them play Christianity, they make sure it's written in Korean. But, Unc, I mean, that was so 1960s. We got a black president now. I mean, you know, we, we got people dunking balls, getting paid more than the white man. I mean, what's, what's, the, what's the big deal? I don't understand. Well, for those I, who don't want to identify with, with racial identity, you know, I would say that you they will identify with the fact that they have historical amnesia. Oh, yeah. and, and and we know what amnesia is. And when you're not conscious of who you are, then you then anybody can dictate to you who you are at that point. If you don't know who you are, then anybody can tell you who you are. And for the most part, that's what has happened in our community. We have followed the dictates of of our oppressor and we identify and see things through his perspective. Instead of going back historically and looking at the African consciousness before it was tampered with Absolutely. or what I would say psychologically molested, hmm. you see, by this, not just by this system, but by these people. That's right. You know, because we know and understand that nothing happens in the abstract. So we're not talking about this spook on the hill looking down on nobody, <laughs> you know, what I mean, Illuminati or what have you. Right. We're talking about actual right. people right. that fuck with our heads. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That manipulated us into this subversive and, and oppressive type of psychology that we that we embrace. But go ahead, brother. Continue on. It says racial identity also appears to have potential protective qualities against risk behavior. That's right. I'm trying to tell you that. OK, it's your shield. Exactly. You know, Absolutely. you keep your guards up. You've been downloading the, 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 the vibes of racism, and white supremacy to make you do like this. Yep. We're free. We're, We're okay. Right. We're all good. Well, let me tell you, they just moved the fence back. You just mm-hmm. can't see it. You right. just can't see exactly. it. Jump outside that box if you want to. <laughs> right. With your free ass. Right. With your <laughs> wait, wait. Um, last time somebody jumped over something, they got shot in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah. See? And, and see, last week was showing how they have a disconnect. Yeah. They do not right. identify with us. I showed you how the old lady was, was bleeding. And the only thing the police woman could do was grab her arm. This mm. lady, 90. And She's still trying it. to put handcuffs on the yeah. 90-year-old lady like the lady's going to get up and run. Is that <laughs> right? Okay, the brother, he's shot in his back. He's bleeding, right? right. At, at what point do you have compassion as a human being yeah. and get some medical attention there? What was that? Get back, get back. They, they get had back. to get back, woo, like in the yeah. NFL. Right. Get back, get back. <laughs> you know, right. And they can't <laughs> identify. They cannot identify with humanity. Because they've been trained 
in a way that humanity doesn't exist. You can't even be a cop in this society and be humane. Wait, DJ. You know, you, they can you, identify you, with a white guy with a beer in his hand. Yeah, because that represents <laughs> themselves, but they can't identify with African humanity. That's okay. that's the point that I'm okay. saying. That's the point no. that I'm making. Oh, no, see, no. I mean, you're, and, yeah. and culturally, they have been long before they ever put on that badge or put that gun on the hip. Historically, they have been psychologically conditioned to not even recognize African humanity. So yeah. when they take that oath and put that badge on in that gun, in their mind, that's a license to kill African people. That's why. Because from the time that they were born in this society, they've been molded into a certain mindset. That's what we're dealing with. But go ahead, brother. Hmm. Okay, hold on one second, because DJ then summons up the caller. He summons them. Okay, hold on one second. Caller. Yes, sir. Yes. Peace. Peace, Peace. brother. Hey, this is Kufu calling in. Um, I wanted I wanted to, uh, to get some clarification on this Neanderthal uh I heard you guys bring that up. Um, I, I would like for you to go in a little more and be more specific uh, when you say Neanderthal. What does it actually mean to have a Neanderthal gene? Does that mean that you're like, you know, like, could you go in and elaborate more on that? And and how does that play a effect on, okay. on biracial children? If you, you know, so you're African and then you get with a, a, a Neanderthal and that child has a Neanderthal gene. Uh, I just want to hear you break that down. And okay, that's that's an excellent question, question, brother. When I when I made the statement that Europeans, all Europeans have Neanderthal DNA, this is from their scholars and from their academics and, and, and research scientists. So this is not anything that DJ is making up with his prejudice races ass. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what they've already documented in their own on yeah, uh, literature. I, 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 but but the thing know, is, I now when I say, I, I, now you have to... I just wanted you to elaborate okay. on the, um, what does that mean as far as like them the, being Neanderthal. The, the point that I'm making with Neanderthal DNA, in, in order for us to really understand how Neanderthal DNA affects Europeans, you have to look at the life cycle of a Neanderthal. You see? And, and when you understand how Neanderthals commune together... You will see the same type of similar behavior, the same type of behavior that exists in Europeans today. They have not left that Neanderthal psyche. Yes. You see, because Neanderthal is not just a physical issue. It's a mental or psychological issue as well. And Neanderthal is in, in my in my mind, the way it was the way I interpret it is consistent with always being in lack because Neanderthals were always on the verge of starvation. You see, they did not build holistic communal societies by which to live. They were very savage in their treatment of one another. You see, now when now you also ask the question, how does that affect a uh, a biracial child? It probably will not affect a biracial child on the surface because you got to remember that Neanderthal DNA oftentimes is a recessive trait. So when you mix that with an African gene, that that gene will probably be dormant in in any child. You mm. see, but there's always there's always a chance that that dormant gene can pop up here and there. You see, now we as black people in America, we know that very few of us are 100 percent pure African. Our blood has been tampered with some black some African-Americans have up to 25 percent European blood in them. Wow. You see, so we have all been been kind of, how can I say it, tampered with. tampered with with this Neanderthal DNA. It's not it's not dominant in us, of course, because the Africanness shows, you see, but it all but it still can show up in the way that we act, in the way that we treat one another. And we call it oftentimes niggerology. Uh, you, you know what? You're also talking about. Uh, when you say Neanderthal, you're talking about archaic man. Exactly. Right. Okay, and you're talking about very, Af very primitive. And you're talking about Africans at this particular point, uh, before the mutation, recognize that we're not going to mix with that. Exactly. Right. Okay. Because that was inherently we, not us. We, we're not going to mix with something that's not because they had racial identity. Okay. Right. Now, by the time the mutation occurred, they lost something that told them not to mix with that. Because mm -hmm. it's not just Europeans, it's all non-Africans. All non-Africans. Chinese. Exactly. The uh, Hindu. Mm -hmm. All non-Africans have that uh, uh, gene of Neanderthal. Right. Okay? Now, I've done a little study on Neanderthal, but the point I'm really making is we knew not to mix with archaic 
man. Right. And is and oh, and, and, and one more point on Neanderthals. Neanderthals as a community never got to the point of being able to write and being able to be able to speak coherent language in all in and, and, and what I mean by that, in languages that would that was easily decipherable from tribe to tribe. So if if we were a community, if you had twenty Neanderthals living in a group, their their language could not even be adopted in the next tribe. They whatever they grunts and whatever, it was yes. totally different than than the other tribe. So there was no way for them to even commune on uh, what we would call a, a nationalist or holistic level. It was no translation of these grunts and things like that right. from one tribe to another. So it was it was basically a total subhuman type of, of existence. And we as African people, we knew that. And we knew not to allow that to come into our communities, into our societies, because that would inher- inherently screw us up. Not only that, caller, and I want to elaborate too, is that there's one common trait you can recognize with the Neanderthal, and this was said by a white woman. I can't remember her name. She worked with Johnny Cochran. But she said, if you look at the behavior of white women who kill their kids, this is not a new phenomenon. <laughs> this comes from eugenics. So when you got, I mean, I can go down a list of white women, and unfortunately now we got sisters doing the same thing, killing their children. That's not a new phenomenon, but that is um, a trait of the Neanderthal way of thinking, as DJ had started earlier. Mm. Well, I hope that answers your question. I don't want to spend the whole thing on on, on Neanderthal. Cool. Um, can you give me a, um, a good book reference? To, uh, to get uh, Michael Bra- Brad, Michael Bradley. Oh, and they couldn't Iceman. all that. Michael Bradley, uh, Iceman Inheritance. He's talking about the Neanderthal. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Michael Bradley, the Iceman Inheritance. And and let me um, uh, for, for one last point, I want I want to play this real quick, just for those who, not okay. for this show, but for next week's show because I know we're gonna probably get some, get some comments. Oh on yeah, it. most definitely. tens of thousands of years ago, and their genetic mark remains today. The BBC's Palab Ghosh has more on these extraordinary findings. 60,000 years ago, our ancestors emerged from Africa. They dispersed across the globe to form the other races of the world we have today. As they left, they encountered another kind of human, much like us, the Neanderthals. This is a skull of a modern human, and this is from a Neanderthal. Look closely and you can see that this one has a slightly longer brain case. Most scientists believe that these are two separate species, and there wasn't much interaction between the two. But now we know there was interbreeding, and that all non-Africans living today are part Neanderthal. (laughs) The researchers extracted DNA from Neanderthal fossils and compared it with that taken from people living today. They found that the DNA of Europeans and Asians is 2% Neanderthal. It's a very exciting discovery because it gives us really the first strong evidence that there was interbreeding with people like the Neanderthals. And it means that modern humans in different parts of the world may have slightly different mixes of modernity and these more primitive genes. Further analysis should give a greater insight into how Neanderthals lived and shed more light on our own early origins. Halab Ghosh, BBC News. Yeah, wow. and that, and that was all out. Now it's our ancestors. <laughs> right. When we yeah. were saying it, yeah. she got the Yaps was saying it, was saying that all life, you know, started in Africa. We was biggest and racist. Exactly. And, they, and they hit us with that trick word, Afrocentric. That's just the Afrocentric style shit. Now it's 2011 and you spend 300, 254 book. Now it's all good. Right. Exactly. Okay, because my wife, they, matter of fact, today in class, they was talking about that. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know, confirming. Yeah. I looked at my wife and was laughing. I said, I've been saying that for the last 10 years. Right. And then, but see, my thing is, uh, DJ, they're only dealing with two species. Dr. Shanker, they dealt with, dealt with four species. Exactly. He dealt with the, it was two other ones that, I think it was Cro-Magnum, and it was another species that died out. They couldn't survive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's actually four, but only two survived. But, you know, but I mean, I'm glad that, that you showed that. But I'm wondering when their so-called peer-reviewed scientists going to deal with the other two species. 
Michael Bradley Ben said they was the Ice Man. Remember that? Yeah. In the yeah. book, exactly. Ice Man. He get exactly. the book. Michael but Bradley. But I didn't. But we want to jump back into the into yeah, the teaching. Okay. But I just wanted to um All right, thank to you, play brother. that for that brother to okay. make All right, that thanks, point. Okay. Thanks, caller. All right. Now where we at? I think, for example, right in the same in, in the sample of in in the sample in and out of school, African American young adults racial identity moderated the relationship between racial discrimination and violent behaviors, okay? More racial uh, discrimination was associated with engagement in more types of violent behaviors amongst, amongst male uh, participants who mm. had low racial centrity. Wow. So now you see why it's in the neighborhoods voice. we're fighting and killing each other exactly. because they have no racial identity. Wow. The Crips and the Bloods are fighting, to, are fighting against each other. But by the time you go to the tomb of Tukunk and Amin, right. okay, I mean, we did that, uh, the image of the Lord, of the living Lord, you find those royal colors right. of blue and red. That's right. Feel me? But y'all wear them colors of royalty and you fight each other. It's opposition. Exactly. Opposition. Okay, now watch this. Uh, likewise, okay, ethnic identity seems to be a protective factor. In a sample of 167 college students, strong ethnic identity was significantly and negatively uh, correlated with beer, Hard liquor, wine, and marijuana use. Oh, they say, wow. in other words, a stronger ethnic affirmation and achievement uh, predicts less use of alcohol and marijuana when you have racial identity. Wow. So we talking about solutions now. See, you always talk about where's your solution. This is a solution to a lot of our problems of drug use, uh, faulty behaviors and sex, uh, just being out of our minds with violence. Oh. All can be solved. Do racial identity and people got the nerve to call up and call us biggest because y'all been knew that because it's in your colleges and your universities. That's exactly. right. That's they right. knew that. They knew. They knew it. They knew it. But wow. I, how we got you now. We straight got you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Well, let me keep moving okay. because because class moves fast around here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Because we're now locked in and we racially identify without information and we got you on point. Now we're dealing with uh, uh, evolution. We dealt with evolution. And I go right here to this book right here, right? Because now we're going to start the psychological, uh, biological psychology. Oh, yeah. Okay? We always hear you running your mouth about, it's no law of reproduction. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. That's no law of reproduction. Let me come here real fast. All right? Watch this. We might not even want it to be a law of reproduction. Let's see. Some people think that in science, you have a theory, and once it's proven, it becomes a law. Okay? okay? That is not how it works. In science... We collect facts or observations. We use laws to describe them. And a theory explains them. Okay. Hmm. You don't promote a theory to a law by, by proving it. A theory never becomes a law. So, you, so let's talk about the theory. Okay. <laughs> a theory of, never of reproduction. becomes a law. Okay. okay. Exactly. So when we talk about reproduction and it being 